Hello, my friend. Welcome to this episode. We are going to be talking about cycle syncing because now it seems like everybody is talking about hormones and cycle syncing. And there is something that you need to know about cycle syncing. So when you see anyone on the internet using this term, you know, and I know, and we are the true ones that know. So let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to the Living in Sync podcast, where we will talk about the biological blueprint of your cycle and how your hormones impact every area of your life. I'm your host, Joelle, certified nutritionist, mom of two, fitness coach for over a decade, and I want to help you better understand your cycle to work with your body in achieving your goals. I will teach you how to care for your body in a well-rounded and realistic way that caters to your season of life and feel freaking amazing. In every episode, you will get tips, takeaways, and just feel like this is a heart-to-heart chat with a friend. Let's roll into today's episode. In 2020, we rebranded this podcast to be the Feminine Fitness Podcast because I had been podcasting, the podcast name used to be Intentional Productivity because I was going through at the time, that was around 2018, a really hard health year after having my second baby. And the funny thing is, is it seems like most ladies start really paying attention to their hormones and their body and how they live cyclically after having kids. And I think it's really just because we have less capacity to push through. We have this constant of taking care of baby, children, multiple children, a career, and then the capacity for excess is just like less and less, right? And so I think that just brings a little bit of an awareness to it. But I remember in 2020 when I was changing the podcast to be Feminine Fitness and really niching and sharing with you guys about hormones and how they impact your body and your biology. And that's why instead of walking around every day feeling like, oh my gosh, what do we, why do I feel this way? We have a better understanding of like, oh, this is what's going in my body. It makes sense living in it living in it makes sense instead of why is this going on that became the focus and then i started syncing my workouts and my nutrition with my cycle and i have learned a lot of different modalities i have learned from a lot of different hormone experts but what you need to know about cycle syncing there's something you need to know and now when you see other people talk about it you're like oh girl If you're not going to cite your source, and you've heard me talk about in other episodes, it's really important for me to cite sources. And what you need to know about cycle syncing, and for legal purposes, I'm going to tell you that the cycle syncing method is a registered trademark framework founded by Elisa Vidi, the founder of Flow Living. And if people. And I bet Elisa lead, Elisa VD's legal team is working overtime because everything, everybody, everybody's using the phrase of cycle syncing, cycle syncing. I've seen people do cycle syncing courses. I've seen people using that term over and over and over again. And I want you to know that I did learn a lot of things from Elisa VD's method of cycle syncing and she has a book she has a membership called in the flow if you put into amazon elisa vidi her books will pop up they're all great i've read all of them and more like i said she is not the only expert i have learned from and now what i'm seeing online is they're just girls learning this and then taking it and then learning it and then changing and transitioning it and the thing is is They're not really understanding like where this really came from and not looking at the evidence and Elisa Vitti did that. And so I really am having this little conversation as a nod to Elisa Vitti for being a pioneer for this because 
while it's not the only, she's not the only one that has talked about this, she does have a registered trademark on the cycle seeking method and people need to res- put some respect on her name. And that's what I'm here to do. So I just want you to know that a lot of these ladies that are teaching cycle syncing are taking what Elisa VD or maybe somebody else has taught and even resources from Elisa's membership, because there's a lot, I will even link it for you guys, because she has affordable resources that a membership site that is really, really, really fantastic. And some people are plagiarizing this by like, oh, I'm going to teach this and I'm going to do it on my own. And in 2020, you know, I had been understanding it since 2018 and then 2020 feminine fitness foundations you know i wasn't only going to talk about cycle stuff but i knew that that had a lot to do with why women feel motivated at certain times have greater cravings at certain times have less energy at certain times and so hormones have been and still are a big pillar for my day-to-day, my content, what I like to talk about, my everyday conversation. Yeah, talking about this in every conversa- everyday conversation. But like, this is what you need to know is Elisa Vitti is the registered trademark owner of the cycle syncing method. And a lot of people are just regurgitating what she teaches. And I really just think you guys... She's got her stuff very affordable. Her books are very affordable. If you really want to learn, definitely check out her stuff. It's so good. Another thing about cycle syncing that I want you to know is it doesn't have to be another set of rules. So many ladies are taking it and they're like, I can't do this. I can't do that because I'm on this phase of my cycle. And I started to do that when I was new to understanding my cycle. I started to do that too. Like I was like, oh, I can't go hang out with friends on this day because I'm going to be in this phase. But what I found is coming at it from more of an intuitive way, understanding your energy and then not abiding by certain rules. Like, and I don't think Elisa VD in particular does this. Like I'm not I'm not saying that this is what she's saying. I think it's just we have such, um, what am I trying to look for here? I mean, we have been told over and over again to like follow somebody else's system and other people are smarter than we are. So we need to do what they say. Like we need to follow their plan. But really like understanding yourself is of utmost importance. So what I want you to know about understanding your cycle and knowing like you have hormonal fluctuations. So sometimes you are going to have more cravings and more motivation or not necessarily have as much energy as you do at other times, but it doesn't have to be this thing where like, if you are feeling like, and this is a very niche entrepreneurial thing, but some entrepreneurs are like, I only accept calls and podcasts stuff during my ovulation because that's when my communication is the best. And I'm just not here for that. I used to do that. And I actually was like, hmm, that doesn't feel right for me anymore because if it's something I'm being interviewed about or if I am talking on a specific topic, I can really speak on that no matter what phase of my cycle I'm in. And I don't want to miss out on opportunities. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to overschedule myself or, you know, if I'm not feeling into it, go against my intuition. But like, we're real women living real lives. And especially now I have this podcast, but this isn't my sole business at all. I am a podcast producer. That's what is my business revenue at this moment. And there are times where I'm editing and my clients need their podcast episodes to go out on certain days. And so I, I like you guys who are working in a job, you know, all of us living in 
normal lifestyles can't just be like, oh, that doesn't feel good. And I don't think that's where necessarily the message of like, do what feels good stem from. It's really coming from the standpoint of afterwards. I've talked to you guys about this before when it comes to working out. I have just a positive association with working out. I know when I'm done working out, I'm going to have more energy, I'm going to be in a better mood, and it just really makes me feel good. So I don't have that dialogue before working out of like, oh, do I feel like it today? I don't know if I have the energy for it today. I'm not feeling it today. I don't have that dialogue back and forth because it doesn't matter. I know on the other side of the workout when I'm done, it's going to feel really great. And now I'm really operating on in in that system of, you know, getting these things done, would it feel so good to do? And not just living by these cyclical rules. Like I cannot do this type of workout in this phase of my cycle because this is what my cycle thinking plan or my hormone plan says to do or not to do, but really feeling into your body. If you're, if you start moving, you start working out, you do the thing, right? If you are, you wake up hungry, eat. If you don't like, cause a huge thing now is hormone experts are saying eat 30 grams of protein at breakfast. Well, I started doing that. And you know what? I started to st- feel really uncomfortable at the beginning of the day. So I've found that a good little breakfast feels really good to start the day with. Mine has typically been some apple sausages and half of an apple. Like it's it's a really small meal, but it starts the day because if I was starting my day with 30 grams of protein, this big, large breakfast, I really just started my day feeling really heavy for some reason. And that's not to say don't eat 30 grams of protein for breakfast, because I've, I've said that here on the podcast before to start your day with a good substantial amount of protein. But I'm saying when you hear something, you try it out on you and you see if it feels right for you. And if it doesn't, and even though experts are saying it's the best way or you absolutely have to, and if you don't, you're going to da 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 Just know, like, take a breath and lean on your own intuition. Living in sync with your cycle doesn't have to be this rigid set of rules. What it really is meant to do is help you understand your what's going on in your biology. And when you have that better understanding, you can then piece it together and be like, oh, this makes sense. It makes sense as to why I'm having more cravings this week. It makes sense why my appetite is down this week. It makes sense as to why I wanted to do and thrived in that kind of workout last week. And then this week, I'm just feeling like I want to do these types of workouts. And it's really bringing a better understanding to your intuition. And so I know you clicked on this episode because you want to hear about the four phases. So I will run through them really quickly as a refresher. But when I go through these and I talk about this, and even with my living in sync method, which you guys, this is kind of crazy, but people have asked about my living in sync with your cycle resources. Are they available via course? And and they haven't been. So I haven't been able to tell you guys where to get them. They've kind of been in this locked vault file folder on my computer. But this month I am adding them to Patreon. So you are going to be getting access to my living in sync method and my my resources from that for $5. And Patreon is a monthly subscription of $5 a month. It supports the podcast. And I'm throwing my living in sync method in there. So it'll stay in there forever for you to have as a resource. And you can watch and listen, you know, while you're doing dishes, while you're folding laundry. Maybe you know this week you're in ovulation phase. You go in and you click that video and poof, there you can learn all about what is supportive for your cycle in that phase. But then I want you to look through the lens of what feels right for me. Like, I I now have this understanding, but what feels different for me? And I've said this before, I really came to the reflection of, you know, with typical hormone health 
experts, not just cycle seeking, but other experts, other people that are teaching about living cyclically, they're like, oh, in this phase, don't be social, go inward. Well, I personally found that if I stay solely inward and antisocial during that phase, it actually makes it more of a miserable phase than it needs to be versus if I'm out and about, kind of distracted, doing something fun with close friends or family, I have a great time and it actually makes that phase, that low energy a lot better. So learn, become aware of your own body, optimize to bring a better understanding. So let's roll through the four phases. You guys know I like to start with follicular phase. So follicular phase is after your menstrual phase. Your bleed has complete And in this phase, it's like your inner spring. So your hormones are back on the rise again. You know, think about traditional springtime. I know some of us live in all different types of weather climates, but think of the like Midwest (laughs) spring seasons. You know, the animals are starting to come out and about once again. The flowers are starting to like bud or some of them are even starting to blossom but things the grass is turning green again it's just nice new refreshing energy then in ovulation phase which is much like our inner summer because testosterone estrogen is peaking at this point in our cycle out and about, you know, the flowers are in bloom, we're ready, we've got the most energy. Daylight is the longest duration. So the sun sets later in the day and it er, it sets later in the day, rises earlier in the morning. That's what I meant. And so we've got this higher, longer energy in this phase. Then going into luteal phase, and luteal phase can be kind of like a roller coaster because estrogen and testosterone are starting to go down. But There are some like roller coaster dips in luteal phase because it can be seven to 14 ish days long, depending on how long your cycle is. So, this is the time frame leading up to your menstrual phase. And sometimes this is our inner fall, right? So, if we're talking about this luteal fall, sometimes in fall it feels a little bit like summer and sometimes it falls it fall it feels a little bit like winter that is the same for luteal phase so it's important for you to take note of what is going on in your body during this phase are you noticing more cravings irritable tiredness just pay attention to what's going on in your body and then menstrual phase and if i could debunk one thing about hormones it is that During our period, our hormones are going crazy. Have you ever heard that where people are like, oh, she's crazy, she's on her period. Her hormones are going crazy, she's on her period. During our menstrual phase, our hormones are at their lowest. So it's not that they're going crazy. They're at their lowest level. So it makes sense to why maybe mood, energy, emotion, you're just feeling a little bit low at the time of this recording. Maybe you can even notice it in my voice. I'm in menstrual phase, so my energy isn't like what it is in ovulation, but I still feel good. I still can handle my day-to-day life and obligations and to-dos and tasks, but it's not like ovulation where I'm getting, you know, so much more done. I'm also not operating. This was another mistake I made and see people make when it comes to understanding their cycle and then seeing like, oh, if I have more energy in ovulation, I'm just going to overwork myself. I'm going to put too much on my to-do list. I'm going to do double workouts. I'm going to do this and that, and I'm going to use that energy because I have it. Then it leads into this burnout cycle where I really saw people crash come late luteal phase. Now it's just a beautiful balance. And I understand my energy differentiations as enlightening information instead of just completely deterring me. I was one of those people that always wanted to be in ovulation energy. I always wanted to be like a little golden retriever walking around everybody, walking around all the time, you know, wagging my tail, wanting to go out and about and, and see everybody and do everything and always have this, always play fetch all of the time. <laughs> like, serious. You know, that's what I should do is coin, you know, we see a lot of people talking about phases of your cycle in spring, summer, fall, winter. It's a good, it's a really, really good 
um, visual of what goes on internally because the external environment does operate in a cyclical way. But I should really make a dog version because ovulation would totally be golden retriever energy. I think follicular phase would be Labrador retriever energy and luteal phase would totally be like Pitbull or Rottweiler energy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know if you know what the dog energies of the cycle phases would be. Let me know. That would be a fun DM. Send me a DM of what, what energy is luteal and menstrual phase if it were a dog? Because totally totally ovulation phase is golden retriever energy 100 percent, right so i hope that you enjoyed this episode if you want to snag my living in sync method for literally five dollars come on into patreon this month there's also so many other cool things that are going on in patreon you have past episodes you can listen to that are exclusive to patreon you have some fun ones that are coming up that will be exclusive to Patreon. So Patreon is exclusive content outside of this weekly episode. And don't forget to check out Elisa Vidi. I mean, shout out to a lot of the ladies that I have learned from. I mean, I already mentioned Elisa Vidi, Dr. Jolene Brighton. Oh my gosh, what other ones have just Kate Northrup, Kate Northrup's mom. There are so, so many ladies that are teaching this. So many. Oh, I cannot forget about Omega. She's absolutely amazing. She's the Cycle Coach Academy on Instagram. Like there are so many amazing ladies talking about this. And while we are rolling into being more of a lifestyle podcast, I do always want to give credit where credit is due. I want to give resources to those of you who are like, wait, wait, I want more on this cycle understanding information and methods and all of the things. I wanted to make sure to have a special episode to shout out to all those amazing resources that, you know, got me to a better understanding of my body, my biology, and mood, energy, emotion, just all of the things are affected by our cycle. And I think as women, when we learn to understand and then evaluate, like look at our own, like what's my body going through? What's my body telling me? And then we can better understand and optimize. And then we're not taken out by big energy dips or we don't over evaluate or we don't like let the heavy hitting emotions linger so long because we have this understanding of it. So I'll leave all that in the show notes below. Thank you so much for listening today and I will talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you loved what you heard or you want to share your favorite episode topics, please leave a rating and review. This helps the podcast growth and gives people an idea of what the podcast is all about. Something new and exciting that I wanted to share with you before we go is that we now have a Patreon page. This has replaced the Feminine Edge Collective community in a cohesive place that is easier for me to manage and cheaper for you. If you are interested in our monthly classes, exclusive day in the life vlogs, Bible studies, community Q&A, and more, go to patreon.com forward slash living in sync and join for just $5 a month. Check out the show notes for any links or details of things referenced in today's episode, and I look forward to chatting with you in the next one.